I'm here today with a review of a brand new style by Renee of Paris. This is Linden in a really unique fiber combination, regular synthetic and heat friendly synthetic. I've actually never seen that before and I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to explain why they did that with this piece. If you want to know more, then keep watching. Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. I am partnering with Renee of Paris on this review. They sent me a whole bunch of their pieces so that I could show them to all of you guys and this is one of their newest releases. They had a whole, I think they had four total new releases recently and I reviewed all the others but I've been holding on to this one because a lot of the colors had been out of stock, including this color, and I didn't want to put the review out when the color was out of stock. Sometimes that happens and I don't realize a wig is out of stock when I review it, so I've been trying to check that more recently because I know how frustrating that is. You watch a review, you think, oh, that's perfect, that's what I've been looking for, I'm going to go buy it, and you can't. So hopefully by the time this video releases, this color will be in stock. And what color is it? You ask? Well, you probably saw it in the title, but this is in the color uh, Cashmere Brown SR for short root. And just amazing. So on the color it says Natural Movement. That, or I'm sorry, it says NM. Um, and that stands for Natural Movement. And that's the blend of heat friendly and regular synthetic. One of the reasons why they do that is to keep the shine down. So one of the things I think a lot of us have noticed on regular synthetic fibers, they can sometimes be a little shiny. Now that shine does dissipate over time. And you can always use uh, dry shampoo or cornstarch or some people use talcum powder to tamp down the shine. But with heat friendly wigs, that isn't usually the case. Heat friendly just doesn't reflect the light like regular synthetic. So doing a combination not only keeps that shine down, but I think it's also going to be protective of these long fibers because friction on heat friendly can be really hard on them. And the saying goes, heat friendly fibers need heat to be maintained. That can be a little tricky to do when you've got a longer piece that has a slight wave. So I'd be really interested to see how this blend holds up over time. Since it's new to me, who knows, but I'm really excited to see how it goes. If you have experience with a blend like this, or if you have Linden, I'd love to hear how it's doing. Uh, and maybe share that in the comments so that you can help out your wig sisters. All right, let's take a look at this one. All the way around. This is such a luxurious piece. Just kind of feels like va va voom hair to me. And one of the beauties, beautiful things of having to wear wigs or choosing to wear wigs, whichever <laughs> is the case for you, is you really can have your dream hair if you want it. When we first start wearing wigs, the dream hair can be a bit too much for us and I don't recommend going there in the beginning, but as you get used to wearing wigs, you can change it up. You can wear the color that you've always wanted to try and the styles and the length. That to me is one of the things that makes wig wearing such a fun journey. This piece has a lace front and a mono part. Let's take a look at that lace front up close, right there. And then we've got a part. Let's take a look inside the cap. I do think this part is rather densely knotted. And so if you like to see more of a part line, I do personally, you can always pluck that part and I have a video showing you how to do that. There's your part, there's your lace, and it's fairly wide over here so you do have a lot of lace there. We've got um, ear tabs with bendable stays, my hand is tucking in that nape so we can't see it. There's the nape, so we've got an extended nape and we've got bra strap or pull adjusters. And then the rest is um, open wefted. Just gonna flip it around and let you guys see that more up close. Very long. A couple of cautions I'm gonna give you about this piece. It does tangle some, so you're definitely gonna wanna carry a wide tooth comb with you at all times. And what I would do is I would periodically 
comb through these ends to protect them from those tangles which can happen when it rubs up on your clothing so kind of just pull the hair around and then just start at the ends and comb through the ends sometimes I like to use my fingers there's a little tangle right there to sort of work out the tangle that way you're not going to be hard on these fibers and you can prevent fraying and tearing but you're absolutely 100% going to need to comb through this regularly if you wear it for long periods of time. I do think that this is going to be the perfect style for updos. So keep in mind, long styles like this can be perfect for event hair. Um, also, updos and ponytails can be really protective of fibers in long styles. So absolutely consider whether or not you want to wear your long wig sometimes in even just a low pony. You can tuck the hair, put it in a low pony, and that can go a long way toward protecting it from tangles. And then because this has a little bit of fringe, you can pull the fringe forward. Or if you're a bang wearer, you can cut bangs into this one. Because this has a template built for you, it's not going to be very difficult. I have a video showing how to use a thinning razor to cut bangs in a wig. It's truly foolproof, even for those of us very uncoordinated and unskilled when it comes to cutting hair. I'll make sure that's linked below. I'll also link an updo video showing how I like to put my wigs into updos. Just a great option if you are wearing wigs and you're worried about some events you have coming up, a longer piece with some waves can really be great for that. Let's talk about fit. This wig is big. <laughs> it is definitely fitting me quite big. I have a lot of cap up here. You guys, I cannot stress enough how much extra cap I have up here. I do have it cinched in as well. I have a pretty petite over the top of my head. It's 21 and a quarter circumference, but like 12 and a quarter ear to ear and 12 and a half front to back, I think. It's all listed below. And one of the things I'm noticing because this is fitting me so big, the lace isn't laying flat very well. So let me show that to you. It just kind of wants to pucker a little bit. And I'm I'm certain it's because this is fitting me big and I don't have quite enough tension on that lace to hold it flat. I can wear this wig fairly well and I would definitely wear a wig grip with it if I took a little bit of adhesive like It Stays or Lace Stick by Wig Guru which I love. I'll make sure a couple of videos are linked below on some adhesives that I like that I find easy to use and very water soluble which makes them easy to remove is I would just dab a little bit on that lace kind of press it down and then it's going to lay flat and you get the added bonus of your wig being extra secure. That's how I used to wear my wigs every single day when I would leave the house and go to work. I'd have my wig on sometimes for 12 hours in a day and I would adhere it typically with its stays back then and I never worried about my wig going anywhere. And I didn't like wig grips back then so I definitely appreciated that extra security. And let's talk about permatees and density. This wig does not have traditional permatees. I touch all the way down to cap when I put my hands up here. So if you are looking for something really flat to the head, you don't like volume and you don't like permatees, this one does not have that. You can also see that it tucks really well, which tells me it's not super heavy density on the sides. Even though this is fitting me big, I can still tuck it pretty well. And I would consider this a moderate, you know, it's interesting. Wigs this long can feel like a lot of hair, but when I do my ponytail test, it is not a thick ponytail. So I would consider this more of a moderate, even low to moderate density. It's not heavy. It doesn't have a ton of hair. I, I, I Honestly, I don't even think this is going to be terribly hot in the summer because it doesn't have a lot of hair. But again, if you live in a hot climate and you're worried about wearing wigs in the summer, but you don't want short wigs, then just plan to style this one periodically. If you put it up or just carry a little scrunchie with you, like all the young girls do, and you can throw it up if you get hot, but you can also do like a half up, half down, leave some of the hair down, pull some of the hair up, and that will help a lot to get some of that hair up off your face and neck. So I do think there are ways to work with long wigs on hot days. I think I covered it all. Overall, I think they did a really great job with this. It's super darling. Even though the cap is really big, I can see myself playing around with this one and wearing it in fun updos. And if the length is too long for you, it's quite long. I'm tall. I'm 5'9". And this is at the very top of my bust. Then you can always trim off some of the layers or some of the length. And 
I have a video showing how to do that with a headband wig, so I can link that in the description as well. All kinds of goodies in the description. We have finally reached color. Let's talk about it. Cashmere Brown SR. Now again, the SR means short root or slight root, very slightly rooted, not much at all. And the description of this color is so unique. So I'm gonna show this to you and get out of the frame. So they're calling this a medium beige brown base with woven velvet blonde highlights. So interesting. I'm considering this to be a neutral to ashy. I would say this is a light brown, neutral to ashy color. The light brown is definitely kind of uh, sort of neutral. And then we've got these blonde, ashy blonde highlights. You can see back here quite a few of those. I would think in some lighting, this could look like a sort of like a somebody had light brown hair that's slightly turning gray in some lighting. I wouldn't call this a gray color, but it is absolutely more on the ashy side. Very pretty color, and I know it's really hard to find ashy kind of brunettes. You can see big chunky highlights here and there. I think they did such a phenomenal job with this root. It's really just a slightly darker tone of the light brown in here. So it's not a different color. It doesn't look contrived or fake. It just looks really natural. All right, let's go outside so you can see this color outside. Good job, Renee of Paris. Thanks for sharing it with me. Talk to y'all soon. Okay. This cashmere brown SR. So beautiful. That soft root. Oh, just loving this color. See if we can get back here a little. I'm filming this just out of the box before I've really done anything with this one and I haven't reviewed her yet so can't wait to learn more about this color which I've already shared with you. Gorgeous, really beautiful brown. Light brown with some blonde. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Here are a few videos I think you might enjoy. Go ahead and click on one and watch.